Hello and welcome to a new ActionScript 2 tutorial. It's the second in a series. So this is what we have so far. We have a simple little application where if you type in the wrong password, it shows the wrong password screen. And if you type in the right password, which we made banana, then it will go to the secret area. But I thought since we're now Flash programmers that we should start making a game. So we're going to change this up a bit. Instead of a password, how about we make it so that we have to get a circle to the exit. So, let's do it. So, we can just pretty much delete all this because that has everything to do with passwords. And the correct phrase right here, banana, doesn't apply to anything anymore. So now all we have is a stopped welcome screen. So, we want a circle. And let's say it's that big. And let's convert it to a symbol. Now, we don't want a button like last time. So we press F8, and when you make it a movie clip. And I usually have this, which is just where the very center of it will be. I usually have it in the very center. You can make it in the sides, but the center really makes the most sense. Press OK, and now it's a movie clip. And movie clips are a little bit more different than normal buttons and graphics. They don't act like buttons. You can't type the script in here, and it doesn't just apply to the frame. Like with the button over here, when you click on the button, it says go to and stop one. Well, it's telling the frame to go to and stop one. But if this were a movie clip, when you say go to and stop one, it would think that the movie clip would have to go to and stop one. You can go inside of a movie clip by double clicking it. I hope you know that. So, let's say the exit will just be on this side of the screen. So we'll draw a little line going from here to here. And if it's past this line, then it will go to the secret area. So when we click on the ball, we'll notice that you can now type script in it, just like the button. And we have a few more things that we can do. Now we can just do the original thing that you've seen with buttons, where we do on, then we can go down to key press, on key press, let's say right, and key press right. Now when we press right, we want it to go this way. We want it to travel that way. So if I get out my rulers, we'll notice that this is the x value. The x right here is 0. Over here it's 550. So if we press right, we want it to go up. We want its x value to go up. So what we can say is on key press right, x equals x plus 1. And there's three main ways you can do this, or four or five, but you can do it like this, where we set the x value, which you have an underscore because it's a property, underscore x equals underscore x plus 1. And we'll notice, once we start this animation, when I press the right key, it'll add 1 to the x, and it'll move it. Just like so. Well, it's kind of slow, so we can do 5. And once we play it, it'll go faster. Now, another way to do this it's a shortcut. Instead of doing equals x plus 5, we can get rid of that x and put the plus sign before the equals. So x plus equals 5. And it will do the same exact thing. It will add 5 to the x when I press down the right key. Okay. We could also do this this way where we just have x plus plus, and then it'll just add 1 to the x. But we'd have to do that 5 times to make it do plus equals 5. So plus equals 5 is 
the easiest and fastest way to do it. And we can also do it going left. I just changed that. Minus equals 5, which is same as plus equals 5, except it's minus equals 5. Also, we can do up and down. When we go up, we now need to change the y value. Also with down, we need to change the y, which would be going this way. So this is 0y, and at the very bottom it's 400y. So if we're going up, you can imagine that it is decreasing. So we want it min minusing 5. But if it's going down, it's going further down, so it's going, um, it's increasing by 5. So we have to plus. And we test the movie, we can see that it's working exactly how we expect it. It's moving with the arrow keys. And that was simply 12 lines of code. But we have a problem. If on the root we just ask if it's if ball dot x the the dot here that is um telling it to find a property inside of ball. So if I create a little chart here, you can um understand it probably a little bit better. This might take a second. So we have the root. The root is where everything's in. And inside of the root, there's simply ball. And I forgot to do this, sorry. But when you click on the ball, you give an instance name. And the instance name is like the ball's own variable, like I went over earlier with the var. And we can name it ball. And that's what it will be called. So under root is ball. And I'll just leave that for a second. And under ball, there could be any more movie clips inside of ball. There could be like its hat or something random. Or as we see it right now, we have x and y. And those are just variables, um, just numeric properties. And root also has x and y, but we usually don't change it because the root is kind of important and change, changes everything. But it also has x. Um, and that's a simple way to show what we're doing right now. And you usually use dots to go from one variable to the next. So since we're already in the root, which is, you'll notice that it's seen, and that's usually saying that it's in the root. So we'd say if root.ball, you can just say ball, but it is in the root. root.ball.x, and if that x is greater than um, 450, trace, when so right here we have a ball and when it's greater than 450 its x value it's greater than 450 it traces when but we'll move it past 450 and we'll notice that oh my gosh it doesn't do it it's past 450 well that's because it's only checking on this frame when this frame is loaded it'll only check it once it's not going to repeatedly do it. Just like if I say trace hello. If I trace hello, it's only going to do it once. It's not going to keep tracing hello. But what we need to do now is we need to um we need to make it a it's an event for every frame. Now, this does not mean that every time you change a frame, like you go from frame 1 to 2, 
It just means every frame, not nonetheless, if the frame's actually changing. So we'll see here that the frame rate is 12 frames per second. So every second, um, whatever's happening happening in our event will happen 12 times. And it looks like this if you're on a frame. If you're not on a frame, if you're on like this clip or something, it's a little bit different. But we'll just do it on the frame right now. So on the frame, you can type on enter frame equals function. You do the um, parentheses. You do a start bracket. And at the very end, we do an end bracket. And on enter frame, what it does is again on every frame it will do what's in here and we make it a function a new function we set it to this function right here which a function is I guess a group of statements if I'm confusing you then just go with me it's still complex but whatever's in here would happen every frame now you'll notice that um, it's not past 450, it's not tracing win. When I move it to 450 and past it, it'll start tracing win. And it does this every frame, even if I clear it. So now we know that this on enter frame function is working. But we don't just want it to trace win, we want it to go into the secret area. So let's just go to and stop on the secret area which is frame 2. Now the go to and stop function is pretty cool because instead of just having a frame number if you click on this arrow you'll see you can have the scene number um, which if you want to make a new scene you can go insert uh, scene. <laughs> but what another cool thing is is that you can actually na label the frames so we can have this frame 2 actually be labeled secret and in here on, on when it says go to and stop you can say secret so if you click on the frame the second frame go to properties and under the properties it says the frame label and you type in secret and so now this frame is labeled secret <laughs> and so you can go to and stop that frame and you'll notice once I go past that mark it'll go to the secret frame really 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 simple we can save our project and now we have a small game another thing that we might want to do is have it instead of going past a certain line we might want it to go to an exit which I'm just using the same clip ball now this ball has no action script on it this one does it's just all part of its instance this one we can scale down like that or we can do it using script now we can use it do we can do it using script by first making an instance name exit going into the actions and by the way this would be a lot easier if you just scale it down using the transform tool but I'm explaining more properties so we can do if oh and you can target your objects by clicking on that button a window pops up and you can click on what you want exit here we are relative meaning since we're already on root it it doesn't need root anymore it can just say exit. If it's absolute, it'll say root.exit. This refers to whatever you're in right now. So you can say this.exit also. I usually just do exit, but this dot exit work too. So this dot exit dot x scale, which is that, all lowercase, which usually properties are, this dot exit dot x scale equals this dot exit dot y scale. And you can do this too. Equals the equals sorry. Um let's make it twenty, which would be twenty percent or 
80% smaller. So when we'll run it, we'll notice that it's 80% smaller. And you can do double equal signs like this. Flash accepts that. Um, I think a lot of other programming languages do too. So we still have it where if it goes past that 450 mark that it will go to the secret area. So what we need to do is we have to check if it's hitting it. So we use this awesome function called hit test. So what we do is root dot ball dot hit test and we use the word exit or that's what the movie clip is. So if the ball is hitting the exit, and if that's true, don't forget about the double equal sign. If it's hitting the exit, then go to and stop the secret. Now this should work. When I move over, oh look, it's not doing it anymore. But when I hit that exit, it goes to the secret area. Now, I'm just going to erase this x scale, y scale thing and transform it normally so that we can, one, save confusing scripting space, and two, it's a whole lot easier. And that's a really simple way to start your game, is make a hit test. And you could do this with other things, too. You could um, expand your game a lot by what I've already showed you you could make a second movie clip named coin and the coin will be gold looking I'm going a little fast because I'm just explaining it or <laughs> showing you you can have coins all over the place and you can name one coin one coin 2, coin 3, and coin 4, and I'm again I'm explaining this really quickly because you can go over what I've already showed you and you can implement this yourself really quickly if you know what you're doing. And what we can do is if ball.hit test coin 1 then we'd make a new variable var coins equals zero if coin one equals equals or if it's hitting the coin one then add one to the coins and that oops and then make coin one coin one dot x equal a negative number far off in the distance would be over here. And same with coin 2, coin 3, and coin 4. So now we have a collecting thing in our implementation. What we'd have is we'd have coins, which we'd use our text box to do. and we'd make it a dynamic and we name it coins so I'm gonna show you when you collect a coin using the arrow keys it'll add one to the coin stacks in the upper left oh I forgot sorry you need to change everything in your script when you do that notice how you have coin one for everything so coin one is only is the only thing that's being moved to negative 200 when I hit coin 2 I want coin 2 to move I accidentally had coin 1 that was my mistake so now it should work I collected four coins and when you go to the exit it tells you that you've entered the secret area Now, now that you have coins, you can make a new variable called var max coins e equals four. And with if statements, 
you could embed them inside of each other. So if coins equals equals max coins, go to and stop the secret area. Or you could use an and statement. What or is it an operator or what? Sorry, I'm getting a little confused. Oh yeah, it is an operator. Pretty sure. And what you do two and symbols, which is the shift seven. And then we can say coins equals equals max coins. So what we're checking is if I'll show you. Since I have zero coins right now, and I go to the exit, it's not gonna let me go to the secret area. Because coins does not equal max coins, which sets this whole thing to false. Um, and you cannot go to the secret area. So if just one thing is false using the AND operator, it won't happen. So I collect all the coins. And now I can go to the secret area. And here's all the code right here. I'll go over it really quick. So, if our coins equal zero, you have no coins. The max coins is four, which if you have four coins, um, if your coins is equal to max coins, which is four, so if you get four coins, and your ball is hitting the exit, then go to and stop the secret area. And then right here is if the ball is hitting the coin, then add one to the coins variable and make that coin virtually disappear. And we have no need for this passwords incorrect anymore. And there you have it, your very, very first game. And you could do um, a whole lot more by adding walls and making it so you bounce off and having velocity with just that simple amount of code I showed you right there. Um, I'm not explaining it too much because you can fool around and learn a lot by yourself. That's how I learned Flash and I think it's a whole lot easier than having someone tell you exactly why something's doing something but I just showed you the very simple aspect of this and if if you have any more questions uh, you could message me and I'll help you out with that and that's the end